every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. It's midday. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us on Core TV News on the R. I am Ebulomo Adikunle. Nigeria's military says a businessman who participated actively in the abduction of hundreds of schoolgirls in Chibok is now in custody. The man, Babuji Yari, is also believed to have spearheaded the murder of the Emir of Goza. Defense headquarters said in a statement on its website that the terror suspect uses his membership of the youth vigilante group, popularly known as Civilian JTF, for his terrorist activities. It added that his main role in the group is to spy and gather information for the terrorist group. Defense authorities claimed that Babuji had been coordinating several deadly attacks in Maiduguri since 2011, including daring attacks on customs and military locations. The terror suspect was said to have provided information that led to the arrest of two female members of the group, including one half Sat Bako, who coordinates the payment of operatives on Boko Haram payroll after each operation. The federal government had admitted that insurgents attacked three communities within 10 kilometers of Chibok in Borneo State, but in spite of that, Coordinator of the National Information Center, Mike Mary, says government is committed I to protecting the citizens. He added that, contrary to reports, soldiers uh, will hand to confront the insurgents. And that's why I said the attack and also were able to repair and kill some of the attackers who were fleeing from, from, from where they were committing the act. Just one week after the bomb attack on Emma Plaza in the Wuse district of Abuja, the place is still crawling with security operatives. They say the area is still an active crime scene, so shop owners have not been allowed access to the shopping mall. Pai Samuel has the details. Today is the first working day of the week, and these shop owners have resumed for what they assume will be normal business activities. But to their surprise, the plaza is still under heavy security watch. For many whose businesses were not affected by the explosion, the only thing they want is to be allowed to open for business. Uh, the business is, is, is down now. It's not really good for us because the deed has been done. But we just want government to see what they can do to put an end to this, this, this mess. We are really in a mess. Everything has paralyzed the whole business. We are, nothing, is nothing is going on now. But the police are insisting that until adequate security measures are in place, the plaza will remain locked. So the owners of these uh, uh, plazas uh, will put certain things in place to, to protect the environment and to protect those who are coming into this place. So when these measures, uh, when the list is given to them and they now meet up, we can now open the place. The police commissioner also ruled out security measures put in place to check insurgent activities within Abuja. Everybody dealing on gas and gas cylinders will register with the local DPO of this area. That he deals on such uh, materials. These scavengers, you know them, Yan Kab, Yan Bola also, you know, who move from one place to the other procedural areas, picking uh, containers, we have banned them from today. I think again we have also uh, placed a ban on private vehicles used as commercial taxis. If you want to become, if you want to, if you want to, uh, you want to use a vehicle as a taxi, go and register it and paint it to Abuja color. Soldiers from the Brigade of Guards are also on ground, collaborating with other security agencies. For a place like this, you 
you would need to have a, at least basic a CCTV system that has capacity to record. So for uh, what happened a few days back, we could take a look at the recordings and then from there the investigations can continue. For now, Emma Plaza is still an active crime scene alongside the neighboring Banex Plaza. The implications is that hundreds of shops here will remain shut until investigations are completed. Pius Samuel, Core TV News, Abuja. Meanwhile, security has been beefed up in some shopping plazas in Abuja following an early morning bomb scare. Shop owners and customers were subjected to security checks at many of the plazas, including Sky Plaza, located close to PDP Secretariat at Wusei Zone 6. Again, Pai Samo brought back the report. This plaza, like other plazas in Abuja, is known for all kinds of businesses. Before now, customers go in and out without going through serious security check. But today, the story is different because of an early morning bomb scare. This is what shop owners and customers are made to go through on Monday. Despite the bomb scare, some shop owners were seen going about their normal business activities. This man says business is at a low ebb since the recent bombing of Emma Plaza. We are tired. We are tired. We are average. Everybody is average. Whether in your house, whether in your shop, whether in your business, whether in the car, traveling. But not everybody has stopped patronizing shopping plazas and malls in Abuja. There is security here. You see, if you want to enter now, you see they will search you. As you want to go out, you will be searched. A look around the plaza, however, showed that many shops are under lock and key. The nearby Wuse market is still bustling as ever. There are, however, more security personnel on duty even though there's no sign of bomb detecting equipment in sight. Pio Samuel, Core TV News, Abuja. News just reaching our size. Former Minister of Transport sharing the administration of Sheo Shagari, Umaru Diko, has died at the age of 78 after a brief illness in a London hospital. The nature of the ailment is said to be stroke. The police in Kaduna have dismissed reports that a bomb was discovered opposite the Queen Amina Secondary School in Kakuri. Residents of the area had panicked when news filtered out that a bomb had been placed by the roadside. But police spokesman Aminu Lawan told Court TV News that a bomb squad dispatched to the scene found that it was a bag of clothes. Elders of the People's Democratic Party in Adamawa State have drummed support for the impeachment move on the state governor, Muritala Nyako, and his deputy, Bala Ngilari, by members of the State House of Assembly. The elders say the impeachment is long overdue and vow to work with the legislators to ensure the success of the progress. The impeachment move on the governor and his deputy receiver boost as stakeholders and elders of the People's Democratic Party PDP say they are in support of the process. They commended the legislators for instituting the impeachment process against the governor and his deputy in a communique read out after their meeting. The current initiative and action of the state legislature on this issue represent the solution, represent the position and wishes of the overwhelming majority of the people of the state. The entire members of the PDP in the state, <clears throat> including the executive committee members of its organs, members of its board of trustees, members of its national executive committee, its stakeholders and elders have condemned these acts of gross misconduct on the part of the governor and his duty, and hence endorsed the impeachment initiative and action of the state legislature. The issues surrounding the impeachment notice served on the governor and his deputy have elicited comments from politicians all over the country. But the leaders of the PDP say they will leave no stone unturned to bring the process to its logical conclusion. <laughs> himself honorably as according to the expectation of the rules and procedure of governance he has flaunted constitutional provision he has flaunted administrative regulations he has flaunted uh, financial regulations governing the state we are supporting what they are doing 
we will continue to give them all the necessary support. And we call all the other stakeholders in all the tiers of government who are good people of Adama to give them the necessary support. I, I stand with the party in its decision to support the members in all that they are doing. That is what I can tell you. But I'm not speaking as a minister. I'm speaking as a member of PDP and the stakeholder. Members that have come to us are members from APC and, a and ACN. And those members have no leadership of the party. Their party is no move. So they have every reason to, to change the party. But a member from Afghan, a member from PDP, that the party are still working at, they have no right to even. So as from the day they came to us, they have every right to partake in any decision taken by PDP because they are no more ACN, they are no more uh, 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 what we call the AP, AP, APC. So they should disregard the... Uh, no, they should disregard anything. No judgment. There is no judgment. Nobody can give such a judgment. Nobody. And APC have no right. They have no members. They don't have a member from the from local government to the state. You see, all of them are PDP now. So disregard our members to disregard that. And if they are the governor and his deputy have been in a cold war with the legislators over alleged financial misconduct, which gave rise to the impeachment process, the third since he became governor. While the governor and his deputy allegedly remain on the run, since the assembly gave the order for the impeachment notice to be served. Time will tell what the outcome will be. It's the Court TV News on the hour. We'll take a short break and we'll be back. Don't go away. Core TV News, expanding your view. Core TV News presents a platform with presence in over 30 states of the Federation. Be sure to be heard. For live coverage of events, we have the capacity to deliver from anywhere in Nigeria and beyond. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733-014-533-407. Our 24-hour news station. Thank you for being there. Outside Nigeria, the deaths of 30 boats migrants have sparked anger and frustration in Italy as critics accuse the government of failing to deal with an immigration crisis which saw over 5,000 people rescued in 24 hours. Rescuers had found the bodies stuffed into the hold of a fishing boat from North Africa when they boarded the vessel to help the most vulnerable of almost 600 migrants in the vessel. A Navy doctor says the migrants had likely suffocated in the tiny space and advised against removing the bodies as it was not yet clear whether there were poisonous gases in the hold which might affect others. The League was warned has warned Prime Minister Matteo Renzi's government that plucking asylum seekers and immigrants to safety from their rickety boats only encourages more people to set out across the Mediterranean for Europe. It is not the first time Italian rescuers have found migrants dead on the overcrowded boats, but never before was there such a large number. The boat has been towed by the Italian Navy and is expected to arrive Tuesday in Pozzalo on the southeast coast of Sicily. And that's the news for this hour. Do join us again top of the hour for more. Thank you for watching. I am Ebulomo Adikuli.